Well, what a way to start off the Hecking Bottom era with a 2-0 win over Bristol City. I'm joined by Carla Sarba and Kevin Gage. What a game that was. Kevin, you were on comms today. Um, you were talking us through the whole game. Uh, really exciting start, really positive start, wasn't it? Right from the first whistle, we were at it. We, we got the feeling that we would be today. It had that kind of atmosphere about, about it. And, and they didn't let us down. We, that great first half performance, you know, chances and crosses coming in and, mm. and pressing the ball and getting tackles in and just being strong and committed. Everything we want to see from a Chef United side. So we, and we, um, the second half was a bit stop start, a bit scrappy. The conditions didn't help, of course, but we, we saw it through and, and a thoroughly deserved victory. I mean, Carl, it was quite nice to be able to watch the game from the comfort of the studio because, as you can see behind us, it's, it's actually so white now. It wasn't quite this white when they were playing earlier on. But playing in those conditions, I mean, you actually said earlier it's better to play when it's too cold than it is when it's too hot. Yeah, I just I think the intensity, we didn't drop off. Um, the match got a bit fragmentous or frag I don't know, it was just, it was bitty, <laughs> it was bitty. Um, but the, the work rate and the, the energy didn't drop at all. So um, it, was, it was great to see. First match, bang on, perfect. And, you know, we came away with two goals. You guys did predict three or four goals, but we'll definitely take the three points in, a, in the 2-0 uh, scoreline. Cl another clean sheet. Um, and uh, uh, Brewster and Billy Sharp. Yeah, you again. mentioned it there, clean sheet, really important. You know, that's where we've been lacking in the, in the f in past few months. We've given away silly goals and let late goals in. But a clean sheet's, you know, really, really important. If we're going to get some kind of run together, then we, we've got to stop giving away these silly goals. And I, th I think we're going to start doing that now. I think there's, yeah. there seems to be more confidence about, about the whole defensive unit, especially bringing Basham in, who's had another great game. Keeper made a decent save in the first half. Yeah. Um, he looks comfortable, you know, when he gets the ball at his feet, his delivery is good as well. So, yeah, everything, everything has gone right today. You know, the fans were up for it, the players were up for it. Our creative play going forward at times was off the scale. So, so good. You know, real premiership quality good. And we've got premiership quality players out there, don't forget. So everything clicked today. Midfield did their jobs. It was just a, a great all-round team performance. I actually heard you say this is vintage Sheffield United. Um, and Carl, would you agree with that, with that level of, uh, level of play we saw today? Oh, that, was, that, was, that was top level football. Um, any team playing that, the, the pundits and the spectators will be, will be purring. That was great. But... These players, we, we know these players are that good and that's what's been frustrating because I'm, I'm arguing with people say, who are saying no, they've passed, they were, they're good players. They're now, they're playing a way that they, they are comfortable with and they're being told what's wanted. I think a lot of this season they've looked like they haven't got direction or don't understand what's being asked, so they're hesitant. We've got good players. Every player on this pitch today put in a great technical performance but it was m married with excellent work rate and, and you can ask for no more. Well, we will be speaking about Billy Sharp in just a second, but talking of good players, there were some outstanding individual performances uh, in the likes of Morgan Gibbs. Why? Um, we had uh, David McGoldrick uh, and uh, amongst others. Who stood out for you, Kev? Well, I mean, I mentioned Gibbs right at the start of the programme, didn't I? Start of the day and, and I know, knew he was going to be a key player for us because he always is. Uh, but today was... The best, team, the best individual performance I've seen from anybody this season in yeah. the Sheffield United, sir, because he was everywhere. Everything went through him. In the first half, he was coming short to get the ball and flicking the ball past people and letting the ball run and driving forward. I mean, he had everything in his game. He's also enthusiastic, isn't he? You know, he's chasing people down and, and tra he's been a bit too <laughs> enthusiastic at times. He, he was close to, you know, he got booked and then it, it was touch and go whether he was going to get sent off if, if he did another rush tackle. So he just had to calm down a bit. But his enthusiasm rubs off on other people mm -hmm. and his ability is without question. You know, we're so lucky to have him. And my, my one hope is we can keep hold of him now because yeah, I don't want him to go back to Wolves. Mm -hmm. Let's just tie him down here somewhere, hide him away somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely a star player in the making, always one to watch. Um, who's shone for you? Well, obviously Gibbs, right, in a, a team performance. For me, I'd say it was a team performance that was outstanding and he stood out. You know, that, I don't know if that makes sense, but everyone was an eight and he, yet, he still stood out as on another level to everyone. Just, just incredible. Everything he did was with tempo, with, with quality and full of desire. Just 
just a top, top performance. It really was. He was on fire and uh, so was Billy Sharp. And uh, post-match today, I managed to get his thoughts on the game. Have a listen to this. Billy, congratulations on the win today. You. Uh, you're a bit warmer now, I imagine. Um, how are you feeling? Yeah, it's lovely and warm here, actually. <laughs> um, no, I'm delighted. Uh, we've talked about clean sheets a lot this season and that's three in a week now, so the lads are obviously buzzing with that. Um, that they... They're dying to get the clean sheets week in, week out, so it's only a good habit to have and it gives us a platform to go and get three points. We've, we've created numerous chances today and um, could have been three or four in the end, but we've got the three points, which we're, we're happy with and gives us something now to, to push on and climb the table. It really felt like the fans were behind you guys today. They were really loud today, weren't they? Yeah, once we went 1-0 <laughs> up, um, yeah. I think they were obviously keen to see how we, we started under the new manager and, like I say, when we got 1-0 up, um, they were right behind us and uh, I'm happy for them because it must have been frustrating in the last few games so got off to a good start with a 2-0 win hopefully now we can push on like I say and climb the table I mean you did mention the new manager there it's been a big week for Sheffield United obviously welcoming Paul Heckingbottom as the manager um, how have the team adjusted to that change um, and how has training been with him? Yeah he obviously knows a lot of the lads from his um, temporary spell last season and I think the lads knew what he wanted to do, so he's tried to put a lot into us in, in the days that he's had with us. Um, we just talked about going out there and be confident and stick together and you know get crosses in the box, which it's brilliant. I love that. So if we're going to do that most games and keep clean sheets, we're going to, we're going to win a lot of football matches. Um, our studio guest today, Carla Saba and Kevin Gage, did say um, it felt like vintage Sheffield United. It kind of gave us a taste of your old winning ways. Did you feel like that? Yeah, it's always always feels like that when you you win a game at Bramall Lane. It's special, and uh, to, to get the clean sheet as well is uh, it's great because, like I say, it only breeds confidence for the lads. And if we know we're going to be solid at one end of, of our pitch, we know that we can create things and go and score at the other end. I mean, of course, you came off the bench today, uh, but this is an, uh, uh, under the new ma manager is an opportunity to hopefully be part of that starting eleven still. Yeah, and I knew um, we, we'd won the last game and. We weren't going to be many changes. Obviously, had to make the change for for John Fleck, which um, was unfortunate for for him. And hopefully, he's going to be on the mend and gets back, you know, as quick as can, but safely as possible as well. But um, Connor came in, slotted in nicely, and I thought he did, he played well as well. So there were some good performances out there from the lads and. Uh, you know, you can't beat winning, so hopefully we can keep doing that. Yeah, there were some very good crosses from Harahan today. Um, we've got uh, seven points from the last nine, and we're six points off the playoffs, Billy. So, you know, that um, promotion is still in sight for us, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Not even halfway through yet, and um, we get too carried away. We, you know, seven points in a week is a good week. Um, we've got, I think it, what is it, three games before Christmas, or just, you know, with a Boxing Day one, so... We can go, go and get the same again. I'm sure we'll climb and we'll be only a couple of points off. So slowly but surely, time has uh, run nicely and hopefully we can get in there. So hopefully more of the same for the next fixture, which is of course at Cardiff City. What are you expecting from them? Yeah, it's always a difficult place to go, but if we can get another clean sheet, I'm more than confident we can take the three points. But um, you draw away from home and win your home games. That's all you need to do. So. Obviously, we're chasing it a little bit, so we'll, we will go for the three points, but um, I'm confident we can go there and get the three, one, three points. Well, thank you for talking Cheers. to us. Congratulations you. on your thank goal you. and the win. Great to get Billy Sharp's thoughts there post-match. He really was on fire today. And I mean, especially with that goal, as soon as he comes on, you know, you just expect magic. All the fans are behind him. And then, of course, he got it to the back of the net. But, but he levelled the keeper. It was like a 50-50 <laughs> chance where you're thinking, oh, the, the striker could get absolutely flattened here. But no, the striker's running off with his hand pointed and the keeper's in a, in a lump on the floor. So... Good old Billy, you know, he gets there, he does what he, he, the team really require him to do and I'm, I'm just delighted for him. He's, he's a proper, proper person at this club who, who really shines. I mean, the fans were definitely behind the team, but they're so behind him. Every time he steps on to the pitch, um, even if he's not in his training, get, uh, uh, in his uh, jersey, they just love him, don't they? Yeah, he's a, he's a proper um, he's club legend, isn't he? He really uh, is. You know, 
he was a brilliant substitute, substitute at the right time. You know, even if Brewster hadn't got uh, some kind of injury, yeah. you could make a great case for Billy being uh, bringing Billy Sharp on because he's always in the right position, isn't he? Yeah. Colin knows the centre forward. You know, he's making the runs into the channel. He's holding the ball up bringing other people into play, winning free kicks occasionally, using his experience. And then when the ball is delivered into the box, <clears throat> you know Billy Sharp's going to be in on the end of it. He's going to be in the right place at the right time. He's going to get something on the ball. He had that difficult overhead scissor kick chance, you know, that he got on target, didn't connect with it, but made sure it went on target. And then, of course, when, when McGoldrick puts that beautiful ball into the box for the goal, He's on the end of it. And as Saab's rightly says, he knows he's going to get absolutely clattered there. He can see this big six foot two keeper charging at him, but he's got only one focus in his mind, and that's to get something on the end of that ball and guide it into the net and then take whatever clattering yeah. he's going to get. Really that's what he's all about. Goals. Exactly. That's that never does. changes, does it? Not bothered about bruises and all that, just scores goals. Good reliability from yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> and um, he's a leader, isn't he? you know, he's a captain, he leads the team, he leads by example as well. And Paul Heckingbottom will be really pleased with that, right? He'll Absolutely. I mean, a wonderful, wonderful start for him. Wonderful start. Yeah. Uh, and you could see the joy on their face. And that, 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 when he's turned around to the crowd, you know, mm. in the snow, as you say, an iconic picture maybe. Mm. Uh, he's, he's hugging McCall and Lester's in there. They're all in it together. Yeah. And, and, that, that, and the crowd will feed off that. Yeah. And you'll start to build a bit of a, a connection with the crowd, get that connection with the Chef United crowd back. That yeah, we need that's down key. Here. It's part of it because we are we're a club, you know, from top to bottom. If you're all pulling in the same direction and feeling the same joy and the same pain, you know when things aren't going for you, there's more understanding. If you have a dis disconnect and you don't show the emotion, it makes things tr uh, tricky in tr uh, tricky times. So I'm glad this is a great start. Uh, I'm really happy for the management. It is a great start, and we're six points off the playoffs. So yeah. that's something we all need to remember. We're not that far away. Absolutely. I mean, I sat in this chair uh, uh, last week and said that this week was absolutely crucial for Chef United. I didn't know that the manager was going to be changed. <laughs> but uh, I, I, said, I said seven points, nine points. I said promotion uh, via the playoffs, obviously, I think, is, is eminently doable. I thought anything less than that, you know, we'd be struggling. But we've got seven, we've got seven points out of the nine now, these three, these three games. Listen, we're six points off and, and we're, all, we're in a very good place. Not in a good place in the league at the moment, but in a good place yeah. as a club with the players we have at the club. Just hope club. Bruce is not, not a serious injury. I hope it's just a cramp or a tightening. He'll be, he'll be, he seemed to walk off yeah. okay, didn't he? I'm sure he'll be fine. Well, it's really good to have a chat with you guys. It's been a really good day at the office, hasn't it? Brilliant. Yeah. Good to get 2-0, two, two three points on the board. Uh, and of course, you do need to come back here to SUTV Live uh, for all the coverage on Saturday the 4th of December as we go against Cardiff City. That's going to be a good one. Join us from 2pm. The game, of course, is kicking off at 3 o'clock. You'll be joined by Richard Graves, Rob Kozlak, and Kevin, you're back again. Thank you for watching. Thank you to my lovely guests and to everyone behind the scenes. And thank you to all the fans watching at home, but also to everyone who came to Bramall Lane today in this weather. Make sure you're travelling home safe and uh, always come back for some more footy right here on SUTV Live. Mm -hmm.